Why do so many fighting axes have two projections on each side, whereas so many tool or wood chopping axes only have one? Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatorial. Now this is more kind of casual musing, okay? Don't take anything here as categorical. I'm gonna make some general observations and statements and some, something I've been thinking about recently. And also, uh, it's not a universal truth that we're gonna look at. Right, so, the general thing is if you look at most wood chopping axes, not all, but most wood chopping axes, um, or tool axes, most of them only have a blade on one side. Now. Understandably, there are things like fire axes, which do often have a spike on the back, and there's certain types of wood chopping axes, which indeed have two blades, or do have a spike on the back for dragging logs and things like that for specific reasons. But I have been wondering, why do so many fighting axes end up having something on each face? And obviously there's several different answers to that question. If we go back earlier into time, if we take something like the Dane axe, um, then indeed, this only has one big blade on one side. Um, so, why is it that as we go later in time, if we look at how this developed, if we look in the 11th century, so 1066, the Danax looks like this. Um, this is from Thor's Forge, incidentally, this beautiful example with a pattern welded blade, highly recommended um, seller of Danaxes, the best that I know actually. Um, so, why did these develop to gradually have projections on the back? Now those projections in the earliest form take two forms. They're usually either a hammer projection at the back or they are a spike projection at the back. Usually a simple spike or a simple hammer. Why did they develop that? I'm gonna come back to the question in a minute. And indeed, that continued with things like the pole axe as time goes past, and in fact they were known as pole axes even from the early point, whereby they get specialized types of spikes or hammers at the back as well as an axe blade at the front and eventually a spike at the top as well. But we're just gonna focus on this bit for now. So we've got those projections here. I've got an example here. This is another example in fact from Thor's Forge. So this is based on a archaeologically found Swedish axe, probably of the 14th century. Uh, this is the type of axe that someone like Robert the Bruce would have used at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. And this has got a spike on the back and an axe on the front. And indeed, if we go to Native American axes uh, like this, then very often, not always, very often a tomahawk would just have a blade on the front, but many of them do have a projection on the back in the form of a spike or a hammer or a um, pipe smoking bowl. So why do we find so often in this wood, if we could look at Indian axes, we could look at Persian axes, there are so many battle axes from around the world where they have a projection on the back. Well, I think the simple answer that most people are gonna say is it gives you options. And I think, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, it means that, Yes, certain targets are going to be more effectively hit with an axe blade and certain other targets you might be have a hammer or a spike and that might be more advantageous against those. Now, it's interesting because the hammer and the spike are almost complete opposites. If we were talking about how would I choose whether to hit someone with the axe blade or the hammer blade uh, here, I would say, well... <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily want my axe blade to get stuck in something and equally the axe blade might not be that effective against armour and might damage the axe blade and I'd quite like to keep that fairly sharp for chopping up the people who are not wearing so much armour so in that case I might like to use the hammer. Uh, also the hammer can't get stuck in anything and I don't think we should underestimate that advantage. Uh, a warhammer spike or a spike on an axe can absolutely get stuck in the target, whereas a mace or a hammer won't, which means you can hit, hit, hit repeatedly with a hammer face and you know it's never gonna get stuck. Whereas you hit with a blade or a point and it will enter the target if you're lucky, and at that point, you're gonna have to try and get the thing out before you can swing again, okay? So the advantage of the hammer or a mace is that it doesn't get stuck. Now, ironically, lots of axes actually <laughs> basically give you two things that will get stuck because the axe blade is likely to get stuck and the axe point, um, the, the sort of pick point, is likely to get stuck as well. So um, I think that's a complicated topic to unpack, but fundamentally I think most of us, probably close to 100% of us, will agree that one of the main advantages to having two things on something like an axe, or something like a battle axe, whether it's a hammer or a spike on, to counterpose the axe blade, gives you options. It's about options for different targets, different opponents, different purposes, uh, with the hammer even potentially stunning someone rather than necessarily killing them. There's all sorts of possible reasons why you might want different things. 
So putting that aside, because I completely agree that that's the most obvious one, here's the thing that I really want to talk about. Balance, okay? Now, something I've noticed over the years is one of the advantages of an axe is also one of the disadvantages of an axe. What do I mean? So, when you swing an axe, regardless of the shaft, and you know I'm a big fan of an oval shaft like this has got because it helps you index the edge and feel where the edge is without even seeing it, but even with a cylindrical shaft, and there are axes with cylindrical shafts, if we look at um, Slavic axes from Eastern Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, and if we look at uh, Indian Bolova uh, axes, I've got one over here, let's grab this as, it, as it's there, may as well use it, we've got a completely cylindrical shaft, and this was a very common type of axe used in India. Um, theoretically, they can turn in the hand because they are cylindrical. However, they, in fact, I'll tell you what, I'll use that as the example. They tend not to do because they are so asymmetrical. Because the blade will always hang downwards like that and you're predominantly striking downwards, it means that when you swing the axe you can actually feel which direction the edge is pointing. It doesn't matter that theoretically that round shaft can revolve in my hand. It might not be what I personally prefer. I prefer an oval shaft, don't get me wrong, I prefer a rectangular shaft. Um, however, I have to accept that tomahawks, Indian axes, Slavic axes, loads of them from around the world, from across hundreds of years, often have a cylindrical round shaft. So why would that be? Well, it would be because it doesn't matter that much, because you can feel with an asymmetrical axe the orientation of the blade um, because it's, um, it's, it, it has weight, it has mass to it, like a weather vane. So, so because the axe naturally aligns itself, that's an advantage of this type of asymmetrical arrangement whereby you have a uh, shaft or lever going up the middle and all of your mass and blade is one side of that, okay? So the advantage is alignment, is indexing the edge and edge alignment. This is also the disadvantage to an extent in that because this is like a weather vane and because it's all one-sided, when you start to change direction, it lags behind and twists in ways that, that aren't very pleasant. So for example, if I swung at someone and they blocked with their shield here and I wanted to immediately follow up and swing to the other side, you get a weird torque effect, a weird twisting effect when you have such an asymmetrical weapon. It, it doesn't want to go exactly where you want to move it when it's so one-sided. Whereas, when we take a weapon which has two projections on each side, whether it's a pole axe or a halberd or even if it's a tomahawk, when we change direction with these things, they have a balance to them that feels now the point of balance, instead of being out here to the side, is up the middle. And it doesn't matter so much if you want to turn the weapon around and strike from different angles and change sides and suddenly, you know, do a feint and things like this. This would go for a, a one-handed axe as well. For me to look like I'm going to strike to one side and then quickly switch to the other side is very easy when I have this sort of balance around the central shaft. So, Without belaboring the point anymore, this is just a little pet theory that I have at the moment, something which has been crossing my mind, that maybe one of the other reasons why having two projections was so popular on axes throughout history across the world, across the centuries, was yes, it's more difficult to make, yes, it's more material, yes, it means the head ends up being heavier, but <laughs> it gives you that central rotational balance that makes it a more nimble and easy to control object and maybe that's why one of the reasons if not the main maybe that's one of the reasons why the Danax which looks like this at the Battle of Hastings if we fast forward a hundred years already we're starting to see hammer and spike like projections on the back to balance them. Maybe it's partly because it makes them not only more versatile for having two different point types or projection points, but it also makes them somewhat more pleasant to use. What do you think? Do you think I've got any kind of valid point? Uh, do you think this is an important point? Do you think it's the main point or do you think it's just completely irrelevant? I'd be interested to see your thoughts in the comments and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you back on the channel soon. Cheers folks!
Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.